As usual, this is a kind of devlog update and at the same time I want it to be kind of a tutorial on how to do proper animations in Godot, so let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Omberus and welcome to another episode. So this week I'm adding animation to my prototype of my roguelike game and the reason I'm doing that is because I got a lot of feedback while I was in Canada about the movement of my ship. People thought it wasn't clear since all the ships were moving at the same time in a single turn and there wasn't any animation. People felt it's kind of hard to figure out what's happening. So I thought one of the way I could maybe fix that is by adding some short animation to show where the ship is going. So adding the animation was a little bit more of a challenge than I expected because I already have an animation system. Basically, I just have a node that receives events from all the rest of the game and then it decides what animation to play. But up till now, all my animations were just simple scenes that are playing something like an explosion, a missile or a laser or something and then I just spawn them when there's an event and after the animation is done playing I just despawn them and it was fairly straightforward but now I have to animate the ships themselves which means I have to have multiple animation on a one single persistent object and that was a little bit more tricky than I thought. How I'm gonna do that was also a question of course, the obvious choice was to do it with the sprite sheets because already my ships are little sprites and I figured I should animate all the possible turns they can do inside my sprite sheet. But I was a little bit scared of that because I already have like a good 20 ships and the idea of having to multiply this by like the number of frame they can do in a 360 degree turns was really scary for me. So I figured, okay, let's do it with animation player. And the first thing I thought is moving the ship from one tile to the other, that is fairly easy to do in code. So let's just animate the turn of the ship. But then combining the movement and the turn, like blending them together was kind of weird. So the next thing I thought I'd do is to save myself some work, I'll have all the possible animation to turn up to 180 degree. And if you have to turn left instead of right, then what I do is I'm gonna play the same animation to turn right, but I'll play it backward. And this also had some issues, mainly because if I play the animation of turning backward, then the ship jumps to the end of the turn and then goes back to its original position instead of using its current position as the end of the animation. So that didn't work either. What I ended up doing really is having all the potential animation for every single 45 degree angle. Luckily my game is tile based which means that there's only eight possible direction you can go. So I just needed eight animation for turning and then going in the direction I needed. Though even that wasn't as simple as I first thought because if the ship ended its last move on a diagonal, then it means that the other moves are gonna be a little bit different. I can't just play the animation for like a 45 degree turn if you're already at a 45 degree angle. For some reason that didn't work, so I had to actually have 16 animation, eight for if you're straight and turning a certain number of degrees and eight if you're in a diagonal and then turning a certain number of degrees. Now even this technique wasn't without some issues. The first one was that even though I have animations, they were all sequential. So when I tried to apply this animation on all the ships in the system, well, each turn started taking quite a long time. So I had to find a way to say to my game that when it's a movement animation, it's fine to keep doing everyone's turn at the same time so that all the enemy ships can play their animation at the same time. But it wasn't as easy as I first thought because I had to put some kind of locks into place because otherwise the player ship would try to shoot an enemy ship that was trying to move at the same time. And I implemented a system where if you're trying to do something else than moving then you can lock everyone and just abort the animation until you finish your move so that everyone will have up-to-date information to keep going. And it kind of works like that. And since AI do their move in like a fraction of a second, 
and I can process multiple AI in one turn, in the end it still looks like everyone is moving at the same time, so it, it works fairly fine. This also fixed the other problem I had, that if I was trying to use the current position of a ship as its tile, its current tile, and that ship was animating right now, so it was in between two tiles, I didn't know which tile I would get. I could get the previous tile or the tile it was going to. The solution to that again is that if a ship needs the position of another ship and that ship is moving right now, then I have to wait until the movement is finished to continue doing my calculation. Another issue I had is that the way I'm structuring my stuff is that I have an attribute node that's a node 2D and this is the actual game object that's representing a ship or a planet or something in my game. And then I attach other nodes to it to give it properties or to um, change its behavior or something like that. So for example, I have a sprite attached to this parent node that is the visual. And that means that when I'm playing the animation on my visual, I'm not actually moving the parent, but it's the parent that need to be moving because it's the parents I'm checking for like its actual game in world position. So the solution to that is that I had to wait till the animation is over and then reset the local position of the sprite to the parent position. And it means a little bit of fiddling around with like local rotation and global rotation and stuff like that. And I'm a little bit afraid that in the long run, some of that stuff might break because it's really dependent on the animation completing, sending an event, and then at that event, setting the position and switching stuff around. And if it doesn't happen like quite in the same frame, you might see some jumping around or something like that. So I'm a little bit afraid of that, but for now it looks like it's working really well. And that created another issue also, because it seems like, like a lot of game engine I've seen, the camera is often updated at the beginning of a frame or calculated at the end of the frame. Anyway, what happened is that the camera is using the position or the translation of an object from the previous frame. So that means that if your object is not moving at a constant rate, for example, like in a constant update, if it's moving by a different amount every frame based on your uh, delta time, that means that you're gonna see some kind of lag between the camera and the object. So when I switch my camera to follow the object instead of like teleporting from one tile to the other like it used to, um, I started seeing the ship shaking, but it wasn't really the shape shaking, it was the camera lagging behind by one frame, but then sometimes catching up a little bit and sometimes lagging behind a little bit. And um, I had to look into the good documentation for that, but turns out that there's a way to force the camera viewport to update at the precise moment during your frame. And that might be a little bit expensive, but it's really the only way to make 100% sure that the camera is perfectly following the ship and we're not going to see some laggy like that. And so that's about it. I know it's still simple. One of the thing I wanted to add is also some uh, visual effects, for example, like an engine blowing when you're turning or when you're moving forward or something like that. But uh, it took me surprisingly a long amount of time to re fix all the little issues with just the simple turn and move forward animation. And so I'm gonna have to wait till maybe the next episode to do the effects I want to do. That's gonna be it for this week. Thank you guys for listening all the way to the end. Um, don't forget to like, su subscribe if you think it was useful to you and leave a comment if you have any suggestion, comment, questions or whatever. I try to look at all the comments that you guys are writing and see you guys in my next episode, bye.